What is going on everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video here on the channel and today is the second video in the installment of the How to Build a Go-Kart series where I am going to walk you through step by step on the process of how to build a go-kart from my own perspective based on the build that I have done over the past two years. Now in today's video we're going to be doing something pretty exciting. We're going to be getting started with frame design and frame design ideas. And we're going to start with looking at some uh, designs on the computer here and where you can get some inspiration from maybe where you want to take some of your um, design cues in your frame and go from there. We're going to be um, then looking at the first method on how to get the sizing of your go-kart based on how big your driver and or passenger are going to be. So Matt's here to help me out to talk about some of the things um, and we're going to go ahead and get right into this. Okay, so in the first part of the video here, we're gonna take it on over to the man cave portion of the garage. For those that don't know, I guess I'll kind of do a little overview video. So the, here's the garage. This is the main workshop area of the uh, go-kart center. So over here you can see that this is the workshop area where much of the go-kart took place. And when I pull the car out here, it also, a lot of the welding and design stuff went on over here. But over here, this is the man cave area. You can see we got the Christmas lights set up because we're being festive. Um, and we got the laptop hook, hooked up to the TV. And we're going to look at some pictures of different frame designs from uh, very complicated frame designs. If you're looking at doing a pretty intricate build or very simple frame designs. And Matt's going to be here along with myself to kind of just talk about some of the, the possible reasons why you might want to go with one over the other. Okay, as you can see, we've got the computer pulled up on the TV, and what I'm going to do is take you through a few different uh, images of different frame designs based on their intricacy and, you know, their cost estimation and things like that, starting from the most complicated and probably the most um, cost demanding. And when people have asked me in the past what was my big source of inspiration for frame design, I told them I looked a lot at like open wheel race cars and in particular one of them was the Aerial Atom. And you can see here the Aerial Atom uses this sort of, it's pretty unique frame design, huh Matt? Like, it is, it, it's very unique. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's very curved and um, you know, there's no, it's not very boxy which is pretty cool. And this frame is really called like an exoskeleton because the car doesn't really use um, any sort of body panels, uh, as you can see here. Like the frame is a main source of the design, and that's why it kind of has this curved look for partly for design, but also um, a big part of the the curvature in the frame is for structural strength. Um, they, they're able to get away with the only using a pretty minimalistic frame in that when you curve long pieces like that, it adds a good amount of um, strength to the frame. It's kind of like a, a bridge, you know, okay. when you look at a bridge, it, it has, they use these curved members for strength. So this is a very complicated, oops, this could be a very complicated frame to build because you got to have special bending equipment um, to bend these long pieces, but just the overall sense of like the shape and it, as you can see here it's kind of like a it's almost like a, a triangle that comes it's wide in the end and then it gets very narrow in the front and that you know that was that's another um, way to look at it so here's another shot so you can kind of see the frames like the exoskeleton part of the um, whole car and they use that as a design aspect oh here's a good picture so it kind of shows you wide in the front because it's a rear engine car and most of the go-karts that I've seen have been rear engine, so I'm guessing your build would probably be rear engine. And then it gets wide, it's, you know, it's wide in the back, it's wider in the middle for the passenger and driver, and then it gets narrow in the front because, you know, uh, it doesn't need to be that wide in the front. And that allows for the wheelbase to be the certain width that it is. Um, and so this, the Aerial Atom was a big source of inspiration for the frame, but also for suspension design. So the Aerial Atom, let's see if I can find a picture here. The, uh, the Aerial Atom uses inboard suspension, which means that the, the shocks, let me just do a quick search here. 
the shocks actually sit inside of the body and they're not um, out on the uh, suspension arms to give extra unsprung weight. So Ariel Adam uh, inboard suspension. That's in poured. Okay, so okay, so now now we have some images here. So this is another big inspiration for my frame was using some sort of inboard suspension um, on the front. The back doesn't really have an inboard suspension. So um, this is basically a, a control um, push rod that comes from the suspension arm. So when the suspension arm raises up, it pushes this rod forward and then compresses this spring, which uh, you know gives the the suspension some rigidity and flex, or I don't know if flex is the right word, but um, it, this helps to get rid of unsprung mass because every time the wheel goes up and down, if the shocks are not on this uh, fixture here, it's less weight to have to travel up and down so the car is a little bit more agile. Um, but I don't want to stray too far from the, the main point here with the frame design. So going back to the frame, the Aero Atom, that is a big inspiration source to kind of get a general idea, but like I said, if you're going to build a go-kart that's kind of like a scaled down version of this, um, some, you know, maybe like that, I don't know, that's very incomplete, but uh, it'll definitely cost you a lot more than um, a basic frame would. And then another car that's very similar to this is called the Draken Spider. Um, it's, it's made by a company called Sector 111 out here in California. It's another open wheel car, very similar to the Atom um, in terms of you know, class of car. I just think this thing looks absolutely insane with this front splitter and rear spoiler. Um, that would be a dream to have a car like that. But anyway, so it uses a frame very similar to the Aerial Atom. Um, it's got some height to it that accounts for the passenger cabin. And you know it kind of has that same um, structural element where it's one long bent tube that goes from the very front to the very back. Um, this is the back of the car and it's a mid-engine mounted V8 and you can see the <clears throat> suspension here and then the, the springs are inboard inside of the frame itself. Um, so that's a little more complicated uh, depending on how integrate you want your frame to be but this is just kind of an idea of where to get some of your frame design inspiration. I have no idea why <laughs> that guy is on the page for Draken Spider but um, it's you know it was a it was a cool source of inspiration and it's kind of where I got some of the suspension design ideas, um, but then so the next source of inspiration really um, is going to be the FSAE cars and FSAE is Formula Society of Automotive Engineers. So most colleges that have you know big mechanical engineering programs will have an FSAE team, and it's basically a team where they build these cars to spec. Um, you know, so there's a certain class. It's almost like if you're entering or building a race car to race in a class, the frame has to be built to spec with certain dimensions, certain weight, with a certain engine size, and things like that. So another source that you could look at are these FSE frames, and um, they're obviously less complicated than the Aerial Atom. The Aerial Atom and the Draken Spider were both accounting uh, for dual pass dual person compartment, so a driver and a passenger. This is a single person compartment only for the driver. So it's a little bit smaller, more fit for like a go-kart, if you will. So you can, there's lots of different um, frame designs for these things online. They also use the inboard suspension and it would be a great um, go-kart to build. Uh, it's got a roll hoop and it, it's a little bit more intricate than mine because it's it's almost like it's raised up a little more. So you kind of sit in it rather than on top of it. That's one thing I was talking with Matt about um, that's different from my go-kart. But um, so you can see like you can go online and there's probably all sorts of models for these things um, that you can just look through and get sizing. And um, one of the things that I, you know, look for the most is not only sizing, but just like the structural elements. So you want to see there's all these different cross bracings in certain areas of the frame to add certain bits of strength so you know that the frame won't um, break on you when you're driving this thing or pushing it hard. So, you know, this is a, the FSAE is a huge program, so this is a great source. Here's a, um, a SolidWorks model. Um, you can go online and find all sorts of different designs and ideas for a car like that. So now getting even simpler, um, now we have 
you know, your, your standard shifter cart frame, kind of like the shifter carts or go-karts you might find when you go to race at a track. Um, there's a few nearby in San Diego here called K1 Speed. They use go-karts with frames like this. Now this is a pretty simple frame. Um, it's very flat, right Matt? Like it's, you know, it's, it's a lot like my go-kart frame, which is kind of where I got this source of inspiration from was a shifter cart. So these carts are all very flat. There's no, um, and with these carts, you kind of sit on top of the go-kart rather than inside of it. Um, and that's because, uh, just because it's so flat. So like here's an example of a frame design um, that's pretty cool. So it's, it's got a similar looking shape to mine, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's they're kinda, pretty similar. Yeah, so it's got, you know, it's kind of square in the back. It's got some angular pieces on the side. And then, you know, it's got the, it's a little more, um, it's got some angled piece in the front. Mine's more squared off. Um, but mine also has the bumper. So, you know, just even browsing Google is a great place to find frame inspirations. But if you really want to build your own, like you can just kind of get an idea. Like, you know, you can see in the in the rear of the go kart, it starts wide, and then it kind of gets narrow in the middle, to where so to allow for the the steering, and then it kind of gets a little bit wider in the front. Um, so that's another source of inspiration are shifter carts, um, and those are fairly basic. Um, you can see these ones have a lot of pieces added on. The, these rear pieces are for the axles, to, or not the axles, the bearings to mount to and things like that. So you can kind of get a source of inspiration. You can see that for the steering in terms of, let's see if I can find a good picture here. The steering was a big inspiration for mine. So you got this kind of A-pillar post here, like A-shaped A-frame post, and then you got your steering rod going down to a pitman arm and then your two um, steering rods. So that was kind of like where I got the inspiration for my steering from um, and the basic uh, frame design idea as far as shape and things like that. So, and then the next one, um, I left this one for the last because it's literally the most basic and the most simple and probably the most cost, um, cheap in terms of cost and low budget build. Uh, it's a very simple square shaped design, a few like sidebars added and you know it's pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot to it, you know there's no suspension or anything. That's, that's a big cost saver is um, suspension. If you want to do the suspension it's going to take you, uh, it's going to cost more and it's going to take a lot more to build it. But if you're just going for a hard suspension, which is fine for a street cart or if you want to do an off-road go-kart, um, that is going to play into the cost and the complication. Like this is very, this is a very basic frame. It's literally a rectangle. Um, I wanted a little more variety than that. And as you can see in my build, I added a lot of the um, kind of angled pieces to give it a much more um, moving look rather than just like a boxy look. And then of course, if you're looking at building an off-road go-kart, you can look at off-road buggies, kind of get a frame inspiration there. Again, that'll be a little bit more complicated because you gotta build it up. I highly recommend if you're doing a um, off-road go-kart, you gotta build a roll hoop uh, just for safety. Like you don't wanna roll it and not have a roll hoop. So that is a big thing. If you're doing off-road go-kart, definitely incorporate some sort of roll bar um, to make sure that you're safe uh, in terms of um, frame strength and things like that. Okay, so just to sum in the end here, because I know I kind of went through a lot in the past few minutes. The basic steps in determining the level of complication between your build and the level of cost is really a few things. One of which is, do you want to build a frame that you sit inside of it, like a lot like this go-kart, or do you want to build a frame where you kind of sit on top of it? like this go-kart. There's no vertical pieces, it's a really a flat frame. And you can see for the most part, my go-kart replicates a lot more of this build because it's, you know, it's a little bit easier um, to make and things like that. So the seat would literally just sit, plop right here and sit right on top of it. There's no really, I would say a cabin, if you will, to go around you. Like this, you sit inside of it. Um, so that's gonna take a lot more design and fabrication and things like that. So that is one level of cost that will definitely um, determine the complication, or one level of design that will determine the cost and complication of the build. And really the other one is, um, there's two more. One of the other ones is, do you wanna have suspension or do you wanna just have a straight, you know, 
no suspension, hard, hard tail, whatever you want to call it, design for front and back. That'll add a lot of time, complication, and cost to your build. But in my opinion, it looks cool. It adds a little bit more intricacy to the build. You know, granted, if you're doing a street card, it's not really necessary. I mean, you never really see shifter cards like this with uh, suspension, just because you know they don't really need it. But of course, if you're going to be doing any sort of off-road go kart, you definitely need a suspension um, to account for. I mean, you don't need it, but it's definitely something that is, um, you know, that would be very usable if you're doing an off-road go kart because you know, you're going to be going over bumps and stuff, and it's just going to really help. Um, go over rough terrain rather than street cart you don't really need it as much and I think that's is that three of them Did I list all three I believe so yeah so I, th I think for the most part that's pretty much it um, in terms of you know the level of cost and uh, complication in terms of time and and design in terms of building your frame okay so one thing before we move on to the next part of the video one thing I wanted to add is really the, after you take a look at some of these different inspiration sources like the Aerial Atom or the Dragon Spider, Formula SE car, SEE car, Shifter Cart, you want to really then go and try and get out your first idea on paper. So just grab some, grab a pencil, grab some paper, and just try and lay out a very rough and rudimentary frame design. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be three dimensional very two-dimensional you know will be very helpful in a situation like this so you don't have to be an artist to do this but just try and get something down on paper so that you can go in and refine it and tweak it as you look at more um, things so you might you know look at something and you're like oh I want to add this so you draw something out and then you kind of think about it and then you change a few things and you find something you finally like then you can go in and go to the next step that I'm about to show you guys and the process of taking it from pencil to AutoCAD or a computer program is something that I'm going to cover in the next video um, but I'm going to go over right now what you should do after you try and get a rough pencil sketch then when what you want to do after you get a rough pencil sketch to get into a, a size that you want to based on your driver or passenger size so I mean just one thing quickly is this is the first frame design that I added onto the computer actually it's not even complete so I don't know what edition this is in terms of render of my frame but you know it's a very basic frame it's just it's literally three sections so you got a front a middle and a back even though there's supposed to be one more so I guess I'd say front middle front middle, back middle, <laughs> and then rear. Um, and so you can kind of divide it up into four sections, I'd say. So you got front, the two middle sections, and then the rear section. So obviously your front wheels are gonna go here. Your feet are gonna be approximately here. You're gonna be sitting right about there. And then the engine and rear wheels are gonna be about here. So that's one way to split it up is to do a, you know, just split it up by section and start with very simple boxes and then you can go in and change it. This is a very simple design. You can see I added these pieces in for some you know, variety in the frame to make it look less boxy, and I changed it as time went on.